For lecture nine, we're going to discuss another type of inferential statistics. It's called hypothesis testing. And uh, let's get started. And by the way, it's, it's the first part. Okay, there will be uh, the second part for hypothesis testing. And uh, uh, this content, uh, hypothesis, hypothesis testing, is actually going to uh, continue for three lectures from this lecture. And the third lecture, is not going to be called hypothesis testing. A, there will be another name for it, okay? So inferential statistics, right? Um, we talked about estimation in the last lecture. Uh, it was about using sample parameters to estimate population parameters. Hypothesis, hypothesis testing is a part of inferential statistics. So what is hypothesis? It is a proposition whose truth or falsity is capable of being tested. So we're going to propose a hypothesis first and then um, using statistics to, to, check, to check if we should accept or reject the hypothesis, okay? So in this lecture, lecture nine, I'm going to introduce one sample testing and lecture 10 will be about two sample testing and lecture 11 will be about multiple sample testing okay they are all hypothesis testing so the first step of hypothesis testing is always um, creating or proposing null and alternative hypothesis Okay, so here is a null hypothesis, right? For example, we have, we have hypothesized mean, and uh, the null hypothesis here is addressed by this letter H0. And this hypothesis is that your sample mean is equal to population mean. Sample mean is addressed by mu. Population mean is addressed by mu zero. So be careful here. In the in 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 hypothesis testing, mu is not for population mean; it's for sample mean. Okay, and population mean here is addressed by mu zero. So this is null hypothesis, and we also have alternative hypothesis. And this hypothesis could be two-sided or one-sided. So if it is a two-sided hypothesis, okay, um, the alternative hypothesis, which is HA, is mu does not equal mu zero. And this hypothesis is usually used when you have no priori knowledge, which means that uh, you are not sure if the sample mean is going to be larger or smaller than population mean. So you simply say, um, my alternative hypothesis is that sample mean does not equal population mean. You can also do more specific one-sided hypothesis. If you have some priori knowledge, it means that I know that um, the sample mean could be larger than population mean or smaller than population mean, then you can just choose one of these two one-sided hypotheses, use one of them to, to be alternative hypothesis, okay? Which means that um, uh, your sample mean is larger than population mean or your sample mean is smaller than population mean, okay? Okay, two types of alternative hypothesis and only one null hypothesis, which is always uh, sample mean being equal to population mean. Okay, so uh, establishing null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is always the first step of hypothesis testing. Okay, if sample mean differs from population mean, it will be larger or smaller than population mean. This is um, this is for this this explanation is for one-sided hypothesis. Okay, 
And uh, before the next step, before the next step of hypothesis testing, I want to introduce a little bit about statistical errors or simply errors in hypothesis testing. So there are two types of them. Type one error means that you are rejecting a true hypothesis, which means that you should accept the null hypothesis, but you actually rejected it. So that's an error, right? So type one error, the likelihood of making a type one error is denoted by alpha, referred to as significance level. So in hypothesis testing, we call alpha significance level. We use alpha uh, to establish uh, confidence level in last lecture when we were talking about estimation, right? So here, you would say uh, this alpha uh, is actually uh, uh, similar to that alpha we used in last lecture, but in this one, let's just call it significance level alpha. Okay, so there are uh, there is also type two error, which means that you are going to accept a wrong hypothesis, which means that uh, the null hypothesis is actually not true, but you are going to accept it. Of course, that's an error, but it is called type two error, which means accepting accepting something wrong. Okay, and the likelihood of making a type two error is denoted by beta, by beta. Okay, so here is a very simple table um, showing the relationship between uh, True, true null hypothesis and uh, uh, false null hypothesis and your decision, accept it or reject it. If the hypothesis is true, the null hypothesis is true, and you accept, you are going to accept it, then you have made a correct decision. And uh, the probability of making a correct decision is one minus alpha, because alpha is the probability to make a type one error, which means that the hypothesis, uh, the null hypothesis H0 is true, but you are going to reject it. That's type one error and the probability is alpha. Similarly, if your H0 is not true or is false, but you are going to accept it, obviously you are going to make a type two error and that probability is better. But on the other hand, if H0 is false and you are going to reject it, obviously you are making a correct decision. Since the probability of making type two error is better than making a correct decision, the probability of making a correct decision is one minus beta. But if you add um, two values uh, for a column up, the result is one, right? One minus alpha plus alpha equals one. It makes sense because you are either going to make a correct decision or you are going to make an error. So the probability is always one, no matter uh, type one error or type two error, right? So this is just um, a very simple table showing you the relationship between your decisions and uh, um, the actual um, situation for H0, okay? Okay, now let's talk about uh, one sample hypothesis testing. We need to use something called Z-test to finish one sample hypothesis testing. So compare a random sample mean to a population mean for difference Right? And we have some assumptions for these tests to be, to be solid, to be, to be true, okay? to be uh, working. Okay? So the first assumption is that your sample is random. Is random okay? And second one, the population, the population is normally distributed. Okay? The second assumption is a strong one because it's, it's very strict. It requires your population um, to be normally distributed. And the conditions, population standard deviation, um, 
sigma again. Here we go again because in last lecture we talked about the the, the, uh, the knowledge about sigma, right? If sigma is known, oh, should you do t test or should you do um, uh, standard normal distribution or should you use uh, s to replace a, a sigma? That's a lot. Here it's very similar to that situation. Okay. Firstly, you have to discuss if sigma is known or unknown, okay? So if the conditions, population standard deviation, sigma could be known, or um, the sample size is large if sigma is unknown, okay? So depending on different conditions, we have different, what, Z value to calculate. Z value can also be considered or just called Z test, okay? So if population standard deviation sigma is known, you can simply use sigma as a part of the denominator of this formula to calculate the Z test value. You will ask why, why should I calculate something called Z test? Uh, I will tell you why, but for now, just follow my instruction, okay? So if sigma is known, you use the formula uh, to the left to calculate your Z test value. Um, this formula is about X bar, um, the hypothesized um, population mean, which is uh, nu zero, and also the size of the sample. If your sample, your, your sample size is large enough and uh, your sigma is unknown, then just like what we did in the last lecture, you use the standard deviation of the sample to replace sigma to finish the calculation of Z test. Okay, you would ask what if the sample size is not large, what should I do? Just hold that, that question in your mind. I'm going to introduce um, that later in this uh, lecture, but for now, let's just, assume that sample size is large enough and sigma is unknown, this is how you calculate the test. You use S to replace sigma. And the one H zero is true. Okay, it means that if the null hypothesis is true, Z value follows standard normal distribution. And we use N zero one to address standard normal distribution. N means normal. Zero means um, for this normal distribution, its mean value is zero and its standard deviation is one. So N zero one actually equals standard normal distribution, right? Okay, so now we have standard normal distribution. It's convenient, it's convenient, right? So if Z is too large, if your Z test value is too large in absolute value, then we know the distance between sample and a hypothesized population mean is too large. And we should re reject null hypothesis. It means that uh, the actual sample mean is just too far away from your uh, assumed um, mean value or your population mean value, okay? You assume a population mean value and use um, mu zero to represent that value, okay? So this is just the idea of um, one sample testing, okay? So, but how far is too far? Because here you are using Z test to address the distance between our sample mean and the proposed population mean. And if this distance, if Z test is just too far away, if according to Z test, uh, these two means, uh, sample mean and uh, uh, assumed mean, they are too far away, then we should reject the null hypothesis, right? But how far is too far? We use alpha to decide. Alpha is called significance level, right? Okay, so here is how we do two sample I mean, two-sided test. So we use alpha to decide the value of Z half alpha. 
how to find Z half alpha, table A2, right? So once an alpha is decided, you can always find the minus Z half alpha and the positive Z half alpha. And these two Z values, they are going to define a do not reject H0 zone. This zone is about zero. And it has two boundaries. One is min minus Z half alpha. One is positive Z half alpha. Okay, because now we're doing two-sided tests. If your actual Z test value is somewhere outside this do not reject H0 interval, then we need to reject the null hypothesis, right? If your Z test value is to the left side of minus Z, Z half alpha, we're going to reject H0. If your Z test value is larger than positive Z half alpha value, then again, we're going to reject H0. And if your Z test value is somewhere between these two critical Z values, obviously it is within the do not reject H0 range or interval, then we're going to what, accept or do not reject H0. Okay, Th this, this whole explanation could be a little bit tricky, but um, that's how you do the one sample, uh, two uh, one sample, two-sided um, hypothesis testing. Okay, so later I will show you specific steps to finish this process. It's not uh, difficult, as difficult as it sounds, okay? Relax. So for example, let's just say, we, we set a specific significance level uh, alpha as 0 0.05, right? Um, the shaded area on each side is 0 0.025, right? Because um, we have alpha, so you know half alpha, and you use table A2, you can find out uh, uh, Z half alpha and negative Z half alpha. And uh, um, of course, you can use it, also use the table uh, to, 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 to find out the shaded area, this two shaded area here, right? And um, yeah, like I said, you know that uh, if alpha is 0 0.05, um, your critical values should be positive and negative 1.96, right? So these two critical values, they have established um, the do not reject and reject areas. Okay, so for one-sided test, um, you only care about one side of Z alpha or one side of negative Z alpha. Okay, be careful here. Here, the critical value is not Z half alpha anymore because you are doing one-sided test. It's Z alpha and negative Z alpha. These details, they're very important, okay? Depending on two-sided or one-sided tests, your critical value may change because when we're talking about two-sided tests, you're going to use Z half alpha and negative Z half alpha as critical values. If it is one-sided, then you use Z alpha or simply negative Z alpha. Okay, these three figures, they're very important. Uh, memorize, try to memorize uh, the area defined by critical values. Which part is do not reject area? Which part is reject area? Okay, for two-sided and one-sided. Okay, uh, so decision rules. Decision rules for one sample Z test. For two-sided tests, your um, mm, null hypothesis is always that mu equals mu zero, right? For alternative hypothesis, it's that mu is not equal to mu zero. Okay, okay. So if, if Z test is larger than Z half alpha, then you should reject H0. 
which means that your alternative uh, hypothesis is true. Similarly, if your Z test is negative and it is smaller than negative or minus Z half alpha, you should still reject H0. It means that your Z test value, let me use uh, a pointer here, a pen, and use green. So if your Z test value is somewhere here, then you should reject H0. Right, because um, the right, uh, to the right side of Z half alpha, you have the reject H0 area or zone or uh, interval. And if your Z test value is somewhere here to the left side of negative Z half alpha, you should still reject H0 because this is also within the area of reject H0. Okay, if your Z value is actually somewhere here between um, negative and positive on Z half alpha, it is within the do not reject H0 uh, area. Then you should accept or say do not reject H0. Okay, it's always about the, the comparison between your Z test and Z half alpha. This is for two sided test. But if it is one-sided test, your, hypo you, you, your null hypothesis stays the same. But your alternative hypothesis could be a mu larger or smaller than mu zero. Then you have to, again, you have to compare Z test and Z alpha or Z test and negative Z alpha. And if we go back, if your alternative hypothesis is that mu larger than mu zero, and uh, uh, you use, of course, Z alpha as the, as, the, as the critical value. And if your Z test value is to the right side of Z alpha, I'm, are you going to reject or not reject? Of course, reject, because this is reject H0 area. If, if your Z value is to the left side of Z alpha, no matter positive or negative, as long as your Z test is smaller than Z alpha, you do not reject. Okay, I will leave this part to you, which is alternative hypothesis equals what? Mu smaller than mu zero. You still need to compare your Z test with negative Z alpha because you care about the left, the left side of negative Z alpha. So for alternative hypothesis for one-sided test, um, if Z test is larger than Z alpha, you reject. If Z test is smaller than um, negative Z alpha, you reject. On the other hand, if your Z test is smaller than Z alpha, then you should what? Accept or do not reject H0. If alternative test is that mu smaller than mu zero and your Z test is larger than minus Z alpha, then again, you should not reject H zero, okay? So it uh, could be tricky here, okay? You have to be very clear in your mind. Um, are you doing two-sided test, one-sided test? If it is two-sided test, what is the uh, alternative hypothesis? And then you should calculate Z test and compare Z test uh, with uh, Z half alpha or negative Z half alpha. If it is one-sided test, it's more complex. What's your alternative hypothesis, larger or smaller than mu zero? And for uh, different branches, uh, you have different rules to reject or not reject H zero. But the idea here is the same, compare your uh, test value with critical values, okay? So for one sample test, we have another scenario. It's called one sample t-test, not z-test. You're still going to compare a random sample mean to a population mean for difference. And uh, the assumptions here are the same as z-test, random sample, population is normal distribution, but the condition changes. 
remember that um, we need to make sure that sample size is larger than 30 to do Z test, right? Right. So now here, T test, just like what we did in the last lecture for estimation, T test is for small sample size, which means that your sample size is smaller than 30 and your uh, sigma is unknown. So now you you know you, you should you should be able to guess what you're going to do. You're going to use t distribution instead of uh, uh, standard normal distribution, and you are going to use s to replace sigma. So you can say uh, the 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 shape of this the 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 form of this formula is very similar to z test, right? Let's get back to z test. Right, very similar. Not the same, but similar. And in t test, we do not use sigma anymore because we don't have it. So we use s to replace sigma. The numerator is the same: x bar minus mu zero. Okay, so when h zero is true, t value has a t distribution. You still want to uh, calculate the test value, but here it's not Z test, it's T test. Okay, uh, similarly to what we have discussed for two-sided test and one-sided test, um, the comparison is the same, but here you're not going to use T uh, Z critical and Z test. You're going to use T critical and T test. And in order to find t critical, you need to use um, half alpha and also n minus one as the degree of freedom, which has been used in last lecture too, right? And here, of course, you are facing t distribution. You're not going to use able two, able a two. You're going to use able a uh, table a three, table a three to find out uh, critical values for for t. Okay. Okay, let's talk about steps. No matter Z test or T test, uh, the, 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 the steps, they are similar here. So step one, state the null hypothesis H0. In your exams, in your homework, please do this. Okay, I know it's simple, but you need to, you must state the null hypothesis H0. Okay, then state the alternative hypothesis HA. This is another thing you must do because this HA will decide if you're going to do a two-sided test or one-sided test. You have to be very clear with that. So always state H0 and HA first when you're trying to solve um, a hypothesis, hypothesis testing. So step three, choose alpha, the level of significance. Uh, usually it is decided by question. You just need to follow it. But in your actual work, your uh, actual applications or research, you have to choose um, by your experience or by convention, right? And step four, uh, choose a statistical test, right? If you have a large sample, right? Uh, sample size larger than 30, then Z test. If you have a small sample, then T test. And find the observed test statistic, which means what? Critical values for Z or T. And uh, yeah, find the critical value of the, of the test statistics, right? Uh, here, uh, the observed test statistic is what? is your test value, Z test or T test. And step five is for uh, critical values, right? And step six, you compare the observed test statistic, Z or T, with the critical value of the test statistic and decide to reject or not reject H0. So here, let's just, um, Let's just make a uh, agreement here. So in this class, we use reject or not reject as conclusions of your hypothesis testing. 
Some people may use accept or not accept H0 as conclusions. Um, it's, it, it, there is nothing wrong to do that. Accept means not reject, right? Not accept means reject, but I just don't want to just confuse you with different terminologies, okay? So in this class, let's just use reject or not reject. If you reject the null hypothesis, it means that um, the null hypothesis is, is not true according to your test. If you do not reject, it means that we're going to accept the null hypothesis, which means that the null hypothesis is true. Okay, here is agreement we make. Okay, so in your exams, in your homework, try to use not reject or reject and uh, get used to it. Okay, okay, um, before the end of this. Uh, video I'm going to introduce uh, an example. It's called shopping trips example. So suppose we want to know whether the mean number of weekly shopping trips made by households in a particular neighborhood of an urban area differs from 3.1. Okay, so now we have mu, we have mu zero. Mu is uh, this long sentence here, right? I'm not going to repeat it. Mu zero is something arbitrary. Um, you have dot if mu is equal to, to a specific value, specifically, for example, 3.0, then okay, 3.0 is mu zero, which is corresponding mean for the urban area as a whole. So yeah. 3.1 here actually has a meaning. It is the corresponding mean for the urban area as a whole. So you want to compare mu and mu zero. So we interviewed 100 individuals, so n equals 100, in the neighborhood and found that, found that the sample mean, the sample mean was 4.2 shopping trips per week. Okay, with a sample standard deviation of S 5.0. So here we do not know sigma, we know S. How to do the test? Okay, so mu zero is 3.1. Okay, N is 100. Mu, which is the sample mean, is 4.0. Oh, sorry, 4.2. And standard deviation of the sample is 5.0. Okay, step one set up. Now, hypothesis, the mean number of shopping trips in a particular neighborhood is equal to the mean for the entire urban area. So here is your null hypothesis, mu equals 3.1. You will say, okay, of course it's not because we know that mu is 4.2 according, according to your sample. So here, we're talking about a concept of statistics, okay? So we're talking about if, according to your, according to your sample, if it is statistically away from our mu zero, it's not the actual value of mu, okay? Okay, so here we have the null hypothesis. And step two, of course, state an alternative hypothesis. Right, you can do a two-sided test. Uh, mu not equal to 3.1. I'm not sure larger or smaller uh, because I don't have other prior knowledge to decide that. We can do two-sided test. Or um, I have some knowledge. I'm going to say that um, the, the, the alternative hypothesis is that mu is larger than 3.0, or you could say smaller than, but here, let's just say larger than 3.1, okay? Then uh, you need to choose the significant level. Let's just say we choose 0 0.05 as the value of alpha. And then um, step four, choose a statistical test and find the observed test statistic. Because n is equal to 100, it's large enough. The sample is large enough. So we're going to do z-test. Right, and we also have 4.2 as x bar. Mm. 
maybe I should go back and change this mu to x bar. It's more clear, right? It makes more sense. Okay, I will do that. I will improve that. Okay, so x bar is equal to 4.2, and we do not know the standard deviation for the population. Right? So what should we do? We use the standard deviation of the sample to, to replace sigma. Okay, so now we calculate the z test value. Uh, this is a formula I provided before. You just replace um, all those parameters with specific values. And we know that um, eventually z test is equal to 2.2. So what's next? You need to find out z critical value. So you can compare z test with z critical, right? So find the critical value of the test. You use table A2 to do that, right? So um, if you are doing a, a one-sided test, then you find out Z alpha using A2. Alpha equals 0 0.05, right? Then your critical value should be 1.645. If it is a two-sided test, um, you find out uh, positive and negative Z half alpha. The value should be positive and negative 1.96. So now you compare them. You compare the observed test statistic, which is what? which is 2.2 with, with the critical values you have here, depending on one-sided test or two-sided test. Then you decide to uh, reject or not reject uh, H0, okay? So next slide. So for example, for example, we're doing one-sided test, right? Uh, where uh, the, the, the alternative hypothesis here is that uh, mu is larger than 3.1, okay? Then we compare. Z test is 2.2, and uh, Z alpha, which is the critical value, is 1.645. So Z alpha is here. Z test is 2.2, is somewhere to the right side of Z alpha, which means that Z test is larger than Z alpha. What should you do? Reject or not reject? Of course you reject because this Z test value is within the reject H0 range. So we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, okay. And the two-sided test, it's very similar here, right? The test value is still 2.2, but the critical value here, because it is Z half alpha, now it is not 1.645, it is 1.96. So again, uh, you find out the position of Z test, negative 1.96, positive 1.96. So Z test must be somewhere to the right side of Z half alpha. Reject or not reject? Reject. Okay, so uh, now next time when you do exercise, when, when you're trying to solve problems for your exams, try to use a, your pen to draw a, ver to a, to draw a draft of this, of this figure. I right? find out uh, the, 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 the position for critical values and uh, find, uh, use them to decide uh, the do not reject and reject regions and then uh, compare your Z test with these critical values to decide you, if you should reject or not reject, okay? Okay, um, I will just stop here, it's long enough, and uh, I will finish this lecture uh, in next video, okay? Thank you.